All right, I'm gonna give it a go at a video on how to assemble a seed signer using this newer open pill enclosure. The first thing I always recommend to people is that you wanna test your components prior to installing them in the enclosure because like with a lot of consumer electronics, once you snap them into place uh, under these ridges that lock like the camera board and the Raspberry Pi Zero into place, once you snap them into place, it's gonna be kind of tough to get them out without either damaging the enclosure or damaging the electrical components. So I like to do a, a full assembly just with the components kind of loose to make sure everything is working. So we're gonna go ahead and do that first. Um, have a Raspberry Pi Zero compatible camera here. I've already removed, a lot of times cameras will ship with a cable that's already installed in here uh, that's compatible with a standard Raspberry Pi but I have the Raspberry Pi Zero cable here. You can notice it's wider on one end than the other. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install that ribbon cable into the camera module by pulling on either edge of the retainer bar. And it's also important to notice which side of the ribbon has shiny contacts because you're gonna want those face down against the green circuit board to make the necessary data connections. So you wanna make sure it slides in and then push down on either side of that retaining bar to secure it in place. Cameras also usually ship with a protective kind of little film over the lens. I think it's okay to remove that now, so I'm just gonna gently pull that off. One more thing to check with these cameras is a lot of times when you receive them, this, uh, I guess, harness, you would call it, has popped out of place. So it's, it's good to put like a finger on there and just push down to make sure that's properly seated. So with the ribbon cable connected, I'm gonna set the camera aside a little bit and get it connected to our Raspberry Pi. So on Raspberry Pi Zero, the camera connection is over here. The memory card's gonna go over here. And of course, power can go into one of these two ports. If you're gonna try to SSH via USB, you need to use this port because it has data as well. This port, uh, if you're concerned about connecting to a computer or something like that, this port is just power, so you don't have to worry about a data connection uh, through that one. So, same as on the camera module, you're gonna loosen that retainer bar on either end gently, don't pull too hard or else it can pop off, but they're pretty easy to loosen. Again, on this side, I'm noting that the uh, the shiny part of the ribbon cable is gonna go up against the circuit board. So I insert that in there until it feels snug and then push that retainer bar down on either side. I'm gonna lay the camera out flat here. And then I'm also going to install the LCD and control hat on the Raspberry Pi to test it as well. So you wanna give your pins a good look, especially if you did the soldering yourself to make sure that while you were soldering the reverse side of the circuit board that none of these pins move. Sometimes if the board gets heated up, the plastic that holds them in place can warp a little bit and the pins can move. If they do move, you can just use a small, say like Phillips screwdriver to push them kind of back into alignment. But it's something to check because if you push down too hard with this uh, LCD hat, you can actually push the pins through the board out of place and that's kind of a pain to fix that. So it's good to just give it an eyeball and make sure all the pins are uh, uh, appear to be aligned before you install this. So gonna make sure it's aligned properly and gently press the LCD hat down. Yeah, this is always the challenge with live demos. I'm endeavoring to do this uncut though, so we'll see. So you don't have to push it down all the way. I pushed this one down pretty far just to make sure it was uh, secure, but technically you only need 10 millimeters of distance between the boards, so it doesn't have to go down all the way, all the way. I have a USB power cable here, and I'm just gonna connect the power cable to the Pi Zero. Oh, whoop, forgot one thing. 
memory card with the seed signer uh, installation image burned to it. You have to install that in the Raspberry Pi. Glad I didn't forget that. So we got that in there and you have to wait about 45 seconds for that to power up. I'll probably trim out a little bit of this video to cut down on the weight. All right, we've got the Seed Center operating system up. I can just use the thumb stick to navigate to settings and then to input, whoops, input output tests. It's gonna initialize the test. And now the camera's active, so if you have a QR code handy, it doesn't have to be a Bitcoin related QR code. You can just Google QR code and scan what comes up on the screen, but you can verify the camera works that way. And I'm also gonna just do a tap on all the directionals to make sure that those appear to be working fine. And the button's over here as well. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna exit. Whoops, go to power off and power off. I give it several seconds for the underlying operating system to shut down. It doesn't quite have to be a full 30, but you definitely wanna give it 10 or 15, so believe we're there. We'll unplug power and we can resume the assembly process. So first thing I want to do is disconnect this camera because we're going to install that in the case first. So the camera is disconnected and I'm also going to, these boards can be a little difficult to split apart once you've push them down on the GPI opens, but if you kind of put one thumb on each corner of the board, you can kind of pry it open. And there we are. Also, don't forget to take the memory card out because you could damage that port if you try to install the memory card, try to install the, uh, the Pi board rather inside of the seed center enclosure with the memory card still in it. So we're gonna set that aside. First thing we wanna do before I install this, I'm gonna double check that that ribbon cable chassis, or ribbon cable, I, I can't think of the right word. The ribbon cable, yeah, it's escaping me. You wanna push down on this part right here and make sure that's seated. I've got the enclosure set up with the USB port and the HDMI portholes away from me. And what I'm going to do is guide this front edge of the Pi camera underneath the snap-in bumps. And then I'm gonna get a feel for how the fit <coughs> of this camera is. So the tricky part about these camera boards is, is I've found having put a number of these together that they can vary kind of broadly in their sizing. Um, the seat center enclosure is designed so that even the smaller ones will snap in, but sometimes when they're larger because of tolerances at the factory, you may have to uh, sand or use a Dremel to just shave off a little bit of, I usually do this side of the board um, because that'll reduce the overall size and it'll snap in more easily. I've already kind of made sure that this camera board's gonna fit, but again, I'm gonna slide it under those two retention bumps on this side of the enclosure. And then I'm gonna peek at this side I can barely see those bumps, which means it should snap into place without too much effort. I'm going to look underneath and kind of make sure from left to right that my camera is lined up with the opening in the enclosure. And then I'm going to press down on the board and you can hear it kind of snapped into place. So everything should be just fine and dandy with that. Now we want to get the camera connected back to the Raspberry Pi board again. So I'm gonna flip the board over, look at the shiny contacts and make sure they're gonna come into contact with the circuit board, insert the ribbon cable and secure the retention bar so the camera's not going anywhere. This is kind of the tricky part we need to pay attention, um, that the cable doesn't fold too much um, or get excessively pulled on or bent. But what I'm gonna do here is come 
down and to the left at an angle. That's why I'm making this video because it should illustrate the process better than I can describe it. I'm gonna make sure that I don't put too much pressure on the area where that retention bar is and the, uh, the ribbon cable is more rigid there. I'm gonna actually kind of slide that into the enclosure and get the rest of the pie in at an angle. Once I have that, I'm also tilting the pie board down a little bit in the front so that it lines up with the USB and the mini HDMI ports. And to verify it's in the right place, I can just spin it around and look at the other side and those pie boards are in the right place and that uh, mini HDMI port is also in the right place. So the cable's gonna be bunched up over here and that's actually the way it's supposed to be so it looks just fine. Now to snap this one into place, we're gonna push down just at the base of those GPIO pins. So I'm gonna put one thumb on either side of the main processing unit there and I'm just gonna kinda of give it a snap. So you can hear it snapped into place, that's what we wanted to hear. And this cable is just gonna kinda of live there underneath the LCD screen. So with the LCD, we've already now confirmed that all the pins are lined up because we fit the parts together uh, before kind of getting them into the enclosure. So now we can put this LCD hat on here with a little more confidence that it's gonna go down into the right place. So we wanna make sure we have it lined up and you can just kind of get a sense of kind of feeling with the pins. Now, at this point, you're gonna push down probably with a little more pressure than you might expect at the base points of this board. And what, what that's gonna do is push the LCD hat down onto those pins so it's secure and you get a good data connection. I didn't point it out before, but on the top of the enclosure here, there's a little shelf that's gonna hold up the other side of the LCD hat, but we need to make sure it goes down and makes a good connection with those GPIO pins. And once you push down a little bit, you can kind of feel that ridge there, and you'll have a sense that the board's gone down and it has a good connection with those GPI opens. After that, really the last thing we need to do is I'm gonna remove that protective cover that it shipped with, install the memory card back into the side, and this power cable that we had standing by. I'm going to reinstall that and give it a, a 45 second pause about to power on. All right, about 45 seconds later, the seed center menus come up. First stop again should be go back to the settings and make sure the camera still works. Um, I'm going to go to that input-output test, select that. And if there's an issue with your camera, depending on what version of Seed Signer you're using, either you'll unfortunately experience a crash or you'll experience an error message that comes up that, that indicates there's an issue with the camera. But because um, the test interface came up, our camera should be fine. And I'll again go through my directionals just to make sure all of the directionals and Buttons appear to be working okay, which they are. And that is it. You're off to the races with uh, your newly built seed center. Hope this helps uh, people get them together. And feel free to join our Telegram chat or hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions uh, on an assembly. Thanks, everybody.